private institutions which has less check and balance and less accountability can be used as a as a way of propagation then, uh, by society. But if you look at the way the media works, these newspapers and uh, TV stations can also be used by different institutions to propagate their ideology. But we think it is still better for these to have this uh, propagation used by limited uh, small groups of society as opposed to a state, uh, state mon monopolized power. That is even also the case in, in Hong Kong. That's why we have people going on the street protecting, uh, protesting the so-called national education that is influenced by the central CBC government, right? Sorry. No, no, thank you. We think under a larger mechanism, different issues, different educational institutions have a different priority in their in their curriculum. And parents know what is best for the family, what, what is best for the children, so that they choose the school that is that, that helps the children to self-actualize, that is uh, according to the facilities the families believe, uh, religious belief or political belief. Also, well, and because there is this uh, customer and client relationship between these parents, the children, and the school. The child, the parents can always go to another school if they do not like the way the school teaches them, their children. So we think with these freedom of choice in the hand of these parents, they can make the best uh, uh, decision for their children and keep this uh, institution in check. So based on these points, we're proud to propose. Thank you. Thank you very much. behind this logic, explaining why it is the case, right? But what we see in this scenario, in under the status quo, is that the reason why public schools are charging that high, or deemed, you know, noble, or higher class, is because they spend a lot of money to the non-necessary, non-necessary facilities. For example, the luxurious swimming pool, the luxurious auditorium, so as to attract the richer families, richer kids from richer families to attend. That is the way they can actually do increase their market share, increase their profit in terms of you know, exploiting the kids from the, from the education. We don't see it is necessarily the case for the school to actually have those facilities in the first place. That is the reason why we say even under the model of that is a system of market product that a voucher provided for kids, we say it is bad because essentially what you are doing is to fund these schools to invest the money not to the necessary improvement of education but to all these luxurious and unnecessary facilities when, and which we say it is a not uh, it is a bad way to use your public resources. So that's our response to that. And thirdly, we talked no, no, thank you. Thirdly, we talked they talked about okay, public schools will also neglect minority because uh, will also neglect minority. We have to come. We have to do a comparison analysis, right? We say that we say that uh, if you compare with that paradigm, what they are doing is to allow an, an a monopoly of private schools, which are quite insulated as compared to public schools to public opinions, right? We said there's a higher chance for your paradigm to neglect minority rights. Because even if your minorities, they want to like want to have a you know a, a kind of for example religious minorities, they want to have a kind of special kind of education designed for them. They actually don't they will find the political process no use because the private private schools have little incentive to actually care about what people call say in a in, in a political process. As opposed to under our paradigm, we say we allow the people to actually voice their concerns, even if though their concerns may be from the minority groups, because they have an access to a political lobbying process that actually gain political power to make the government to change and accommodate for that. We say our paradigm is superior in the sense that it has a lesser risk to neglect minorities. Right? That's why their point also fail. And then fourth idea I come from that side, national education, right? Interesting idea. What we're talking about is that see the Hong Kong government is trying to push the national education 
public school. We see that the problem is that how much Hong Kong government has been tracked this. Why is that the case? Because Hong Kong government is something that checks advance, right? Hong Kong government is afraid of people, a lot of people protesting on street. As opposed to private, profit-driven entrepreneurs, right? They don't care about how many people go on the street. It doesn't affect their government. They're not governing society, right? They have no stake in terms of public opinion, right? That is fundamentally different to public schools, right? We say the problem is that if you allow a monopoly of private schools, if private schools want to have their own propaganda, for example, religious propaganda, or whatever other kinds of propaganda, for example, like capitalism is the best, you hang to follow capitalism, whatever kind of propaganda, we say there's a lesser way to actually defeat that curriculum to be implemented in the first place. You, you just can't go on the street and force these schools to reject, just like Hong Kong will do in the national uh, education saga. Don't you agree? I've already told you, under your paradigm, it is because the schools have less incentive to cater for different parts of people in society as opposed to the government. That is the reason why it's, you are essentially limiting the range of choice that you are providing for the people, for the parents to choose, right? You are essentially limiting the choice to a set of education or schools that is specially designed for the wealthier or more prestigious groups in the society. We say that it's problematic. You are limiting choice, not expanding the choice, right? So we are the coming from that side. They say that education is for the purpose of getting a job. That's why uh, parents have an incentive to choose private schools. That's why your private school is no sensitive to market, right? I'm going to tell you why getting a job is getting a job or no more uh, money return, high mon monetary return your job is not the only goal of education in my consultancy. So listen. So what we say as a principle is that we want to preserve the diversity of students uh, nurtured by our education system, right? We say that uh, when you provide a monopoly of uh, private schools occurring in society, what will likely be the case is that these private, private schools only provide subjects or only train students which will have a higher return, which will uh, pro provide a higher monetary return for them in the future, right? Because when they become parents, they also find these schools are so useful. They also find that alma mater is so useful in terms of nurturing into you know, good businessmen or good entrepreneurs, right? We say there's an inherent incentive to limit the scope of limit the scope of ed curriculum or limit the scope of subjects provided. There's an incentive for these private schools to also prioritize higher high, uh, high money rewarding subjects, for example, science to humanity or politics, which are no less often making, right? Because they want to attract donors who are also in the same field, right? That is, that is problematic. Why is that the case? Firstly, it is bad for students to actually achieve self-actualization as they also want to protect, right? right? When we talk about self-actualization, it's not only about money making. It's about allowing students to actually choose the real subjects that they like so that they can have their pursuit of their own happiness in an academic investigation uh, during their study, right? That's why we also value political studies. That's why we also value music now. Also value sociology. We don't want private schools only provide this curriculum to attract do donations from people in these fields. We say it is bad. So the second level of analysis, we say your education system essentially will, uh, uh, we say your education system will, will make the society lose a lot of intangible benefits, right? So we say that, for example, politics is incredibly important for the sustainability of the development of the political system in the future, in that society. Public schools definitely make incentive to keep this subject, right? But apparently, public schools have less incentive to do that because apparently, politics are Politicians are not the richest people in society. They have less incentive to donate to private schools. Uh, they have less incentive. Uh, uh, the donation that they can get if they create curriculum specialized in politics, it, it is likely that it will attract fewer resources or fewer donations as opposed to they open subjects like businesses, right? They open subjects like scientific research, right? We say it is bad because a lot of intangible benefit, but also incredibly uh, ben, uh, important for the society development will be lost. That's why we say that paradigm is completely limiting diversity uh, in, and also completely hindering students from actually choosing the subject they want to want to study. We say it is bad and we are very proud of those. Thank you.
so that uh, all the teams would agree that education is important and education should be properly supported by the society. But the question is, how do we support education? And as a closing comment, we do the comparison here. We, want to, we would like to show you why turning all schools into private will bring uh, more com uh, competition and um, this, uh, this uh, interest-driven nature of these private schools will bring better quality of education than these public schools do. And second, we will show you that there is also greater uh, degree of freedom of choice in this, uh, in this uh, education system, which especially caters for the needs of all the kinds of students, uh, be there, uh, be there uh, poor or uh, religious minorities. So, uh, so, uh, so, first issue, let's, uh, let's deal with uh, the quality of the <coughs> um, What we hear from the uh, opening opposition is the idea that because state has the duty or like, have the incentive to provide the social good or provide the maximum utility of, uh, to the society, so that they have such an interest to provide like, to, to support these public schools. Well, exactly the point. Because the, the schools are deemed as, uh, as, uh, as the means to provide social good, so that even if these public schools are doing poorly in their, in their education, like when, when your scores are far lower uh, when in, in standard tests than the private school students, it's still, uh, these schools are still funded by the state to continue running. That's why when they're that, so even if they are doing poorly, they still um, continue to run. But, but when, when our schools are turned uh, um, uh, trying to say that uh, uh, no later this, the incentive that we provided in this market, uh, in, the, in the markets, like, like the monetary incentives, like for the huge, huge like education like corporations, or the incentives for the religions uh, or the churches to provide the, the proper education that they deem is important for the, the, uh, the actualization of their religious beliefs. With, with uh, this interest, are uh, more uh, interest and these competitions of interest are more likely to achieve the goals to provide higher quality of education. It is uh, this competition is uh, the, the the duty driven uh, nature of government education is not that well uh, functioning. Yes. Why do you think the state has an incentive to keep hiring teachers who consistently do bad job? Um, because, like, yes, that, that's, uh, that's also this to our like uh, second issue, like uh, also about the issue of accessibility. Because the state, like in the name of providing public good, they would like to provide all uh, like all students like a chance to go to school, so that they would um, they would continue to fund these public schools, like uh, no matter how well they are doing in their uh, academic achievements. So that are no no thank you. So that uh, actually they are the ones who would like to like to cater uh, because of they want to make this uh, set of law so that at the end of the day they are they are the ones that are most likely to cater for the uh, the majority. Like uh, we said uh, like the majority values like uh, for example even if many many state run schools in Nancy says uh, are namely secular, they still, uh, still uh, Christian values are pervasive in, in these schools in their education. So that we think that when we compare two, uh, two models, we say that it's actually our model in which uh, all schools are private that provides a greater chance of, of freedom, a greater uh, degree of freedom. Why? Because when these public schools uh, when these state-run educations are bad, the vacancies of these uh, public schools are will be rapidly filled by these private schools, driven by their interests, either the monetary interests or the religious interests. They will rapidly provide the education for to cater for all of the peoples uh, in this uh, market equilibrium. So that in this case, even if you like, you are coming from a religious minority group, you, st you still like. 
you still have um, a better chance of going to a school that is uh, set by your, uh, your religion, like I like a Sikh or a Buddhist in uh, America. We, we, uh, so that we, we think that in this case, it's actually more likely to give the, these students and their studies a chance to choose the education that they, they believe is best for them, rather than like this uh, education which is uh, uh, so called coding the existence of public schools and private schools. But let's, let's, the third issue, let's deal with it. Uh, Yes. Why do you need to abolish all public schools in order to retain the schools catering, the private schools we, uh, catering for religious minorities? Why do you need this model to do that? Um, no, yes, that, that's this good. That's actually the, uh, the most important issue of this state, actually, and, uh, the quality and also the quality of education. We think that actually, because of the existence in the status quo of these public schools, Actually, the poor and the minority, especially the economically less well off, will more likely to like um, to to go to these public schools, which the quality is uh, cannot be ensured uh, in this competition with private schools. So that uh, they will be end, end up uh, less well off, and this this uh, cycle is actually perpetuated if you allow these public schools. So that in the third is we say the coexistence, the idea of coexistence leads to better competition is also uh, uh, is also not right because the assumption is that public the, the the premise is that public schools should be as good as private schools so that we can bring private competition to a better place. But the status quo is that when the when this Public schools are not performing well. We say that the existence of this not not this this uh, poorly performing school is actually uh, do not give the incentive for other private schools to further increase like their accessibility or the quality of education. So at the end of the day, we say that we are actually providing better education for all of our learners. Different kind of school, different kind of 
society. And we think that's very important. The hope is the important thing. That's all. <laughs>
to, to put this kind of uh, fi financial aid in that, in, in that sector. So we see there's no uh, limited, the limitation of choice education is not accurate enough. And also we, yes. So do you think public school or private school can create an incentive to create curriculum in, for example, political science or other humanities? Because we see that, however, under the current educational system, those of the students, if they really have this willing and really have this uh, inclination for the subject, they will choose it. However, if the students they don't have, then maybe they just they just won't choose it. So this is just a very um, a responsive, uh, responsive, um, responsive action. Not because of the school who choose to put the money in the sector. However, the students won't choose that because it is not uh, it, it is not a it not 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 very uh, monetary driven. And the third clash is that the quality issue. We see that the uh, assumption coming from the opposition side is that only the dominant religious group or the uh, financial the dominant group would choose to study in the private school. However, why is this the case? We have to uh, resort to the reason that result in this kind of uh, situation. Because the general the general picture of the public school is that the, the resources of the uh, of the uh, state family is not that very much. So the good teachers will not come into uh, the public schools, and also the students who have very uh, very busy tasks. So this kind of criteria make for the whole school running into a very corrupt situation. So also the uh, because of the this problem, the after uh, the national uh, standardization test. The students cannot do a very, very, very good job. So, in that case, the rich people would choose to go to the private school. It is not because of the uh, assumptions that are coming from the opposition side. It's because of the non-necessary facilities, the very luxurious facilities. It is just because the teachers are good and they the more facilities in the facilities. So that will happen. So, um, for all of these reasons, uh, we are very proud to. Uh, 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 educate you to become 
found that high quality person that may, may start it, uh, in the uh, scientific starting or if you can do that much well and uh, you can go to a uh, skill university or you can just uh, do that kind of thing. We say that uh, in my model I already defined that in this area uh, we are only focusing on the primary and secondary schools. Alright, that's the uh, last point I want to say that it's about the involvement that uh, which can be more just a way to uh, have to accept the more people to involve in our educational system. It's because only by the public and the government system we can have the uh, uh, we can, we can, before we can be subsidized by the government so that the government system can have more money to support more students to study there. And even though this school pays, they are living in the village or living in the mountain, and they have, uh, they have a compulsory educational uh, uh, responsibility to go to school. And we think that can make the more involvement of the government, which can accept different kinds of people. Uh, especially for the poor case, and so that uh, and so that we think that we, uh, the government model can be the state run education can be the uh, better model. And the second second question we think is the harmony uh, that that we want to achieve, especially the uh, social stability. It's part of all uh, uh, of in the same state run educational system. We can. Uh, Learn, learn the same, and we can learn together about the the, uh, the true thing that we think, so that we can form the ideas and the, uh, thinking uh, to just for, fight for our our same goal. And we don't well, we don't uh, have to be competitive about which uh, which law is superior than others. That like we don't have have so many conflicts between like in relations. We just uh, want to have. Uh, we can just gather the different group of people together. We can reduce the conflict because the same similar ideological thinking, uh, so that it can be more easily to be understanding with each other. Even though we, uh, even though because we have the basic fundamental knowledge, so it's not won't make, won't, won't be so hard for us to understand each other. And uh, the important thing is that if we can have the state-run education system, it can be the hope of the poor that they can, uh, they know that the, the final goal they can achieve is to get the, uh, uh, one day they can be admitted by the, uh, by the school, or even though they can uh, afford the tuition fee, but they can still have the hope that one day they can go to the school because the government-run system will uh, apply this uh, we give them this right to, to go to school. Currently, they have this hope, and we think that everyone should have the uh, have, have the responsibility or to, to be educated, and, uh, especially for the poor. That what they know is their hope to, to be educated. Okay. In my model, in my model, I have already provided school vouchers to those economically depressed people, which means that they can still access education, right? So we say when we have compared um, the harms of the um, the harms of the government um, education, we say the private schools. Yeah, I'll mention that the nature of the education we think before is that we want to help more people get involved in that system. It's because we don't want to be the poor and we don't uh, want we don't want to be be the farmer or live in the uh, countryside forever. We also want to fight for our our later life. So even though. Uh, so we think it's not fair to just deprive this kind of person's rights and to, to have this uh, private own model. And the last question uh, is about the improvement of the society. And after more people being educated, we think there are more high quality labor resources and they can be more uh, useful to develop the whole society and can make the improvement of the society. And when they, when they, uh, when the more people are uh, in the system, we think that they can make more contribution for the whole development of our society. And we think that uh, is is the uh, improvement of the society by the state of model and this Thank you. Thank you very much.